Welcome to What a Week It's Been. I'm Ben Steerick, and today we are joined by the incomparable Sean Clark. Sean, thank you so much for joining me today, man. Yeah, no problem. So I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. We've got host and creator of Horror's Hallowed Grounds, the collection with Sean Clark, co-host of the Thing with Two Heads podcast, horror fan and prop collector, musician, screenwriter, and celebrity personal appearance agent for his company convention, All Stars LLC. Did I miss anything? That's pretty good. <laughs> awesome. Sweet, sweet. That's, more, that's more than I need. <laughs> well, that's the best, man. Well, I'm super excited to have you on. We've met a couple times in person, but coming on the pod really, really means a lot. And um, yeah, tell me what you got going on right now, man. It looks like you've been super busy lately. Oh, God. Yeah, just gearing up for conventions. Um, been trying to, when I can, uh, add new content to the channel. Um which I don't, I don't have as much time to do that. Uh, I've been trying to when I can. Um, fortunately, a, a buddy of mine, Brian Balchek, who uh, he helps me a lot on the channel, does all my graphics, you know, my thumbnail images and stuff like that. And um, so he's kind of pushed me into uh, letting him do a, some more stuff for me, like uh, so. so He's been coming over and filming some collection videos, and then he's been editing them nice. and sending me finished copies. And then I take them and I add stuff to them, maybe cut out a little bit I don't like or something. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, he's doing the main editing on those. Uh, so he's he's been trying to get me like one a week so I can have some consistent content uh, in addition to other stuff I've been doing, you know, like... Uh, the horse hog ground stuff or a thing with two heads, you know, so trying to, trying to pump out some con consistent content, you know, because it seems like YouTube, the algorithms, if you, if you're not constant, they kind of leave you in the dust. So. Yeah. The algorithms are a real bitch. Definitely. But it yeah. seems like you're, you're crushing it, man. I just watched your uh, planet Hollywood video mm -hmm. and I did notice like a little bit of an uptick in quality. I noticed it's like your stuff has always been good, but it seemed like a little bit more cinematic. Like it looked really nice. Well, don't get used to it. Cause that's, <laughs> cause that was, that was uh Brian, you know, he went with me and he shot it on his camera, you know? So no. when it comes to the location stuff, you know, I could go out and I definitely got the money to buy fancy stuff. But you know, the thing is, is when you go to these locations, a lot of it's so spontaneous and a lot of it is, um, a lot of people get weirded out when they see professional equipment and you get a lot of resistance, especially with the filming locations. So yeah. I'd rather just walk in with this. And nowadays with this, people don't question it anymore. I mean, rarely do people go, Hey, what are you doing? Because so yeah. many people are filming just crap. They're filming their lunches. They're filming everything. So you don't really get um, bothered and I don't want to be bothered. So I don't want to come in with a big gimbal and all this stuff. And, and, yeah. you know, it, and it draws attention to yourself and I don't want attention. I want to be able to get into my zone and do my own thing. So yeah. until this technology gets better, you know, I'll keep getting the better new phones with the better cameras, but I, I, I kind of want to keep it simple. You know, I don't, I mean, I get it. It's, it's nice when you see a higher definition quality, but to me, I'm way more content over quality. You know, I want to, if I don't care if you've got good content, I don't care if it's scratchy footage. Yeah. I don't, I don't care if it's old, barely watchable. If I'm interested in it, you got me, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, There's so many channels that are much bigger than mine channels of your caliber and like Grim Life Collective and channels like that who I've talked to where they're like, Oh yeah. A lot of times we just use the iPhone and it's just like, yeah. seems like that's the way to go. So you're right. It's totally uh, content over like gear. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of people, the, the, I don't know, they, they get kind of caught up in that whole, everything has to be perfect thing. I mean, I, to me, yeah. what I care about is the information. I want to make sure the information's correct. And I want to make sure that, um, the content is good. The, the, whatever I'm presenting, you know, if, if you're watching a video, if you're watching one of my videos and all mm -hmm. you're thinking is, 
wow, you know, I wish this looked a little better, then clearly I'm not doing a very good job of engaging you into the, what I'm talking about or what I'm showing. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so I, I'm not, yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I want, I, I'm low tech in those regards. Nothing wrong but with I that. I do appreciate that you noticed oh, cool. Ryan's <laughs> uptick in quality of the, you, uh, I heard, if you, if you I had the comments. Next episode, if you filled the next episode on a potato, I'd watch it. It's just, it's, it's good <laughs> stuff. I don't care what it looks like. It's beautiful. Um, so let's get a little bit into this just for the audience who might be new to you. Some of the unfazed crew who might be just discovering you for the first time. Um, obviously you've done a shit ton of stuff. You were deeply ingrained in, in the business and different aspects, but I was curious how, how you really started and in getting into like being an agent and doing things like that and how, you really got connected with like the roots of Hollywood and like how this really became your life. God, <clears throat> that's just a long, boring story. <laughs> I mean, really, I was just a horror fan that was going to horror conventions and started meeting people and becoming friends with people mm -hmm. and just kind of getting, uh, making connections and, um, you know, weird circumstances doors would open and I would walk through them and I never intended any of this to to be where I'm at with it today with an actual like full-time job you know I I, yeah. I never I never expected to be doing any of this I mean it, it all just kind of happened snowball you know um <clears throat> but it, it really just started as being a fan going to conventions became friendly with some, you know, horror type celebrities, um, started like vending, you know, like selling some stuff. I started get, you know, I was, it was in a time when there wasn't horror merchandise. There just wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, Hey, I want to start a t-shirt company. This is, you know, pre fright rags, you know, I mean, I, I want to do a horror shirt company. Um, I, you know, there should be better Michael Myers masks. I, so I started a mask company, you know, I mean, I started doing all this underground, technically bootleg shit, which yeah. I didn't at the time really didn't know about licensing. And I was literally like, this stuff isn't available. I should make it available. I should, you know, and, um, you know, I learned obviously as I went along, oh, wait, you know, this is, but mostly back in the day, if you went to a horror convention, 90% of what was at the convention was bootleg, whether yeah. it be VHS videos of hard to find movies or T-shirts or model kits, resin kits, you know, garage kits. There mm. wasn't this. I mean, you go to a horror convention now, it's the opposite. It's 90% licensed merchandise. It's. Yeah. Pop figures and action figures and toys and trick or treat studios, masks and fright rag, rag shirts. I mean, everything is legit now. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you rare, I mean, you do see bootleg stuff all the time still, but it's not, it's completely flipped from then to now. So I kind of started in that and kind of made my mark, if you will, in the Halloween mask community. I kind of, a lot of people say I'm the guy that started the whole Myers mask kind of underground scene, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, not that I intended to, nor tried to take credit. I mean, there was a guy before me, um, uh, Horror Sanctum. Um, his name's escaping me. He passed away a few years back. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, but uh, he technically did the first bootleg shape mask that was more uh, looked like the real one you know um nice. when when the only thing available was the dom post the mask you know which didn't yeah. really look like the shatner yeah uh, but most people didn't even know that that mask ever existed it kind of was a thing of folklore you know even mm -hmm. me who was big in that scene had never seen one in person i just heard about it and it was documented in that there was a a book i have it somewhere it's not the dom post one that came out like 10 years ago but there's one it was a very underground mask collector shitty quality book that came out 
Um, I have it up here somewhere. I'd have to look on my shelf. But in that book, it was documented about his mask. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of way more people found out about it. Like, oh, this this was out there, apparently. I never saw one. Um, But uh, anyway, I kind of got known in the Halloween underground fandom chat rooms, whatever, Mm -hmm. message boards of the past. And through that, got brought into doing the Halloween 25th convention. Nice. Which again, I I just was a fan and thought it would be fun to be a part of it and didn't know it was going to turn into everything it turned into. You know, I mean, that convention, um, that was another door that opened that went into me, you know, it's a fly flying. It went went into me, uh, you know, getting into booking, you know, I mean, that was my first, part of my job on, on that convention was finding Halloween stars and getting nice. them on board for the convention. I kind of learned how to do that, okay. but I wasn't so that really that first, like, uh, sorry to cut you off. Is that where you first met like, uh, Nick Castle? And well, I met Nick Castle after that. Um, okay. he didn't go to the 25th. We, I, I think I probably reached out to him and he totally shut me down, totally shut me down. Okay. Um, it wasn't, I didn't meet Nick Castle until, well, actually, I take that back. I did meet Nick. I met Nick prior to that. Okay, I met Nick in 99, I think. Uh, 98 or 99, uh, he, he showed up for a screening at the Egyptian Theater. I think it was like the 20th anniversary of Halloween. Nice. Um, and I caught him leaving and... That poster I have that everybody's seen, the old, um, the international one, the real rare one, mm-hmm. I, I pulled that out and and he did sign. And that was the first time I met him. And I, as a fan, got it signed with, you know, super mission accomplished for me. That's amazing. Um, but I was able, I, I bugged him and bugged him for years about doing conventions. And it was Tommy Lee Wallace that who I had gotten to do a convention before him. He talked Nick into coming to H30 and he just came, he wouldn't come as a guest. He just wanted to come visit Tommy, not thinking anybody would recognize him. And he got mobbed, but he wouldn't sign for anybody. He wouldn't take pictures. He was really kind of being a dick. Um, uh, and, and, you know, it was funny, you know, we laugh about it now, you know, but, uh, you know, I got him to get go into the green room and I, I said, Hey, look, you know, would you be willing to, you know, I said, we got X amount of VIPs. Would you mind what you, we don't even have to have you out. We can put you back here and we can bring them in one at a time. If you just sign for the, and he's like, Nope. <laughs> wow. Okay. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He just, he wanted nothing to do with it. It was tough. It was tough getting him on board. He was a tough nut to crack. That's like, and a now different. he's the most game guy on my squad, man. You know, that's like a whole nother component that like, I feel like would be so crazy to navigate. Like you get into doing what you do and working with all these different people, different, you know, uh, levels of seniority in the business and everything. And you get some people that are just like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's take every picture. Let's sign every autograph. And you got the people that are probably like, no, I'm a hermit. I want to live on an Island. I want to be alone. And you're like, no, let's try to figure it out. You know? So yeah. that's or they uh, just don't understand it. They just don't yeah. they don't get it, you know. I mean, yeah. Lance Gast was another guy like that. I bugged him for years before he'd finally try, you know. And once he did one, you know, I mean, the the in the first day, they're like already going, you know, when can we do this again? You know, they're on board, you know. That's awesome. So, One thing I've noticed about going to different horror conventions and bringing some of my friends in who'd never been, like my co-host on the Unfazed Review podcast, Emmett, he'd never been. First time we we went last year to Mad Monster Party, that was his first time. And one thing he noticed and his girlfriend Emily noticed was like how fun and open and accepting the horror community is. And that's something I've always known. And I'm sure you know better than anybody. It's like, it's such a fun, welcoming like environment, you know? And I think it's, it's different, especially when you go to like Mad Monster Party or things like that, compared to like your traditional Comic Con. It seems like it's a little more open. It seems like people are a little more accessible, and it just feels a little more like kind of loose. You know what I mean, loosey goosey. 
Yeah. I was talking to um, a new client today um, and I was kind of explaining to her how it works. She's never done one, she, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling her, I said, you know, <clears throat> cause the movie, I can't say anything about who it is or what the movie is, but the sure. franchise that she's becoming a part of um, is pretty extreme and the fan base is pretty extreme. And I just said, Hey, you know, the one thing you're going to, the misconception is that you think that horror fans are going to be weirdos and like, you know, screwed up in the head. I go, you're going to find that they are the most normal, nicest people you've ever dealt with. Yeah. Um, and so be prepared to be surprised at how you're, what you probably are thinking it's going to be like is not going to be like that. Yeah, it was it was such good vibes all around every time I've gone, and I'm sure you know, you've been to probably a million more than I have, and it, I'm sure it's the same across the board, right? It's like generally just a very positive, pleasant experience, you know. Yeah. So what's it like now? Um, I don't. I'm sure you can talk about it now because you I, I've heard you talk about it a little bit um, going going on the road with uh, Ozzy and like Jack and Sharon and everybody. What's what's that experience been like? Well, we've only done one convention, so. Um, you know, that, that was an amazing experience. I mean, yeah. uh, so, I mean, it was, uh, it, it just, every once in a while, I got to kind of stop and pinch myself because yeah. it, it blows my mind that, you know, I'm working with freaking Ozzy. I mean, I, you know, I saw him in yeah. concert when I was 13 years old, you know, I mean, it, and now I'm, I'm. I'm resp I'm the guy that brought him to this event. You know, it's it, to me, that's, you know, it, it, I didn't think I would ever top the Jamie Lee Curtis thing, that's which, huge. which yeah. I still think in a way is a bigger achievement in some weird way. Uh, maybe not just be, but, but I guess in the, in the world of horror, it was, sure. Sure, um, yeah. but I never thought, I thought that that was it. Like, I'm not going to be able to beat that. You know, yeah, and, and then when, th when this happened, I was like, wow, you know, I can't believe, uh, you know, I, that, yeah, it's unreal. Brit Britney like, Spears. How, oops. I did it again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. How is it like, I mean, like hanging out with Ozzy, like, like, like what, like, what is that even like? Like, I mean, I'm she well, seems very fun and friendly, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's funny is, uh, I, I only had a few conversations with him, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when I first met him, now, mind you, I hadn't met him until we did the event. I, I went over to their house and I met Sharon and Kelly and, and I'd known Jack because we've been doing shows. Yeah. And I was so disappointed when I went to their house and Ozzy didn't come downstairs. I kept They kept talking about dad upstairs. I'm just like, come on, man. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I never saw him. So when I did meet him, um, so we're in the room and Jack is like, Oh, Hey dad, th this is Sean. You know, he's the one that arranged this. He's the one that brought us here. And he just kind of goes oh. <laughs> like that, like kind of yeah. looks up at me, like nods. And, and then yeah. that was it. And I was like, Shit. wow, that was not what I was hoping for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But then as the day went on, and I was in the room with him at some point he looked at me and he looked at, he was looking at my tattoos mm -hmm. and he, and he just kind of goes, he points, he goes, what's your, what's your tattoos? You know? And I said, Oh, this one, this is all twilight zone episodes. And he goes, I fucking love twilight zone, man. I'll watch it every night. You know, that episode with the, and he starts like describing episode full. Suddenly he was totally engaged. Man. And we were in a full conversation and, and, and that was, that was really cool. And, and I sat with him and I was working with him for a while and I was, I was making jokes and I couldn't, you know, and I was getting a weird delayed reaction from him. Like I, I would say something cause I have a very dry, sarcastic sense of humor yeah. and I was kind of giving it to his fans as they would come up. I would say something sarcastic to him. And then I'd note, and I'm like, oh shit, he didn't laugh. I hope he didn't think I was being rude. And yeah. then he'd sit there and he'd be like, 
<laughs> you just start cracking up like like it was like a delayed reaction. And uh, my, the favorite thing of the weekend, uh, we were in um, the photo op room, and uh, they were doing the group photo ops, and. I was walking around doing something and then Jack, they were about to finish the group and they were going to go into Ozzy solos and Jack comes walking up to me and he goes, he goes, dad likes you. He said, he, he said, you make him laugh. And, and dude, that just warmed my heart. I mean, it's just, I like, I got the approval of the Prince of darkness. You know what I mean? Yeah. My weekend was made. Yeah, I mean, that's like a, a huge part of your life that got made. You yeah. Know, that's I mean, because the last thing you want to do is is obviously have a bad experience with an idol. Of um, or Or just even walk away with a bad taste in your mouth. Like, oh, man, I don't, you know, that yeah. was not what I expected or. Yeah. You know. And I'm sure that happens sometimes, but I'm glad it wasn't with Ozzy because he's a, he always seems really cool in interviews and stuff, you know. Yeah. No, he, he he's. He he was great. Um, you know, really? they're very they're very particular. They're very particular people. Like they yeah. they want things a certain way. You just got to do. You know, you just take care of business, and everybody's happy. So no. that's the best, man. Um, I I got so many notes here. I'm gonna try to like go touch for it. Everything that we can. Um, what was it like also working with John Carpenter? Like your event with John Carpenter? Like how was that? That seemed like you know, man, H H forty five. Yeah, yeah, because I know you had some interaction. Well, I didn't have a lot of interaction with him. I, I was, I was a part of helping him get there. But okay. once he was there, with with the exception of saying hi to him real quickly as I was running around, I really didn't have much interaction with him that day. Oh, okay, so it was um, more just kind of just around. I went and met the guy Antoine, who's his assistant. I went and met Antoine. And we got him in and we got him to where he needed to be. And I walked with him, but we didn't really talk much. I mean, I, I've, I've met John so many times. I've interviewed him so many times, you know, working on almost all of his friggin' releases for Scream yeah. Factory. And so, you know, I've been to his office so many times. He, I used to always say, I think he's sick of seeing me because okay. it would literally be like, oh, you again? Like, yeah. seriously, he would say that, like, yeah. what are you doing here? Like, yeah, oh, here we go. He, you know, he's, he's very, he's a very surly individual. Yeah. I mean, the interview though, in itself, I mean, I, I saw you post on Instagram recently and it's like that in itself is just so badass. You know what I mean? Like to me, mm-hmm. that's so cool. But yeah. let's see what else we got here. Um, one thing I wanted to comment on is some of the parties I've seen you have on Instagram. Um, looked like uh new year's eve was pretty crazy you had what matthew lillard uh who else was there Um, no that was that was our christmas party oh christmas party okay new year's eve i was at scott ian's birthday party because he's a he's a new year's uh eve uh is his i i I think his his birthday is new year's eve okay Um, I got so I went to his birthday party on New Year's Eve, but what you're talking about was we had a Christmas party at my house. Yeah, dude, that looked amazing. Like just like star studded, so cool, so <laughs> much fun. Like you know what's crazy about that is is you know the uh, genuinely those people that were at the party are all have all become good friends, right? Yeah. And we all hang very heavily when we do a convention. You know, yeah. It, there isn't a lot of hanging outside of the convention. I mean, I've been over to various houses for their parties or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, you know, and, and, and it really says a lot and it, it honestly, it means a lot to me that they would go out of their way, not, and, and what, what people don't know is every one of them, live over an hour away from me so it's not like it's a right down the street this i'm in south lot. orange i'm in south orange county all those people are in la you know so to to come to my house is a commitment <laughs> so so the fact that they were all willing to make that trip you know uh really meant a lot you know so that, um that 
That must mean a lot. Yeah. They all seem great though. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, it, it turns into a thing where you feel like, God, I don't even want to have another party after that. It's like, how are we going to top of that? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's amazing. So the, um, the only experience I had with those guys was at mad monster party. And I still, to this day, can't quite figure it out. But me and my buddy, James, uh, James Hetty from the no expectations podcast, um, we we were walking through there, just just doing our own thing, hanging out, talking. And Jamie Kennedy walks away from his his booth, his area, comes up and just like, you know, <laughs> grabs my hand and like gives me a hug. I'm like, what's up, man? Good to see you. Had never met Jamie Kennedy ever in my life. I don't know who I looked like. I don't know what the deal was. Gave my buddy a fist bump. And he's like, great to see you guys. Walked away. And to this day, we <laughs> cannot figure out why because we had never met. But, he must have thought you were someone else. I know. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not Jason Statham, I swear. But um, that was really cool because it just totally caught me off guard. And it was just like, what the fuck? Like, what was that about? And then uh, we went and saw or got a picture with uh, Matthew Lillard. And that was one of those where I feel like it was a fumble on my part because I went up. I was so excited. Love and respect the guy. I think he's so great. I was really excited when we went up. And I don't know why I said this, but I walked up and I was like, hey, Matthew. Uh, without a paddle is life. And then he just looked at me and he's like, it's not life, dude. And I was like, uh, <laughs> more choice of words. And I'm like, I really like that movie. He's like, you can like the movie. He's like, but it's not life. And then he's like, move along. And I was, I think he was just fucking with me. Yeah. But um, he was, it was so funny. Cause my, my buddy James wanted to, you know, go again and uh, get some stuff signed. And he wanted to do a shaggy impression for him. Cause he does a really killer shaggy impression. And we came by again. And so like I was in line with him and we went up. Matthew was eating a using eating a Reese's, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. he looked at me and he was just like this guy again. And he just like <laughs> wouldn't even acknowledge me and like took a picture with my buddy. But uh, I felt bad about that. And I was like, shit, man, if I ever see Matthew again at an event, I'll have to go up and be like, ah, sorry about that. You know, nah. but it was it was one of those. But at the same time, I think he was just, you know, breaking my balls a little bit, too, you know. Yeah, he he likes to do that, so I'm sure that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 surreal, you know. I mean, um, it when uh, th- there were definitely points where I'm looking around the room, going, "Wow, this is insane," you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, and I, it, I don't, I don't really feel that way very often because, like I said, they are friends, like. The, yeah, but yeah. every once in a while, you got to take a step back and go, oh, holy shit. You know, th- this is kind of nuts, you know, um, and it, you know, and it's, you know, I'd be lying if I, if I didn't say that I was proud of, you know, like my aunt came over for, she was at the party and she's looking around going, yeah. holy shit, dude, you know, That's like, really cool this is unbelievable. Who's here? Like, you know, it, it, it definitely makes you feel proud, but, but at the same time, you know, I'm posting pictures from the party, just sharing our good time with, you know, more for us that were there, mm-hmm. you know, and people see it and they're like, Oh, wow. And then, and then I hear people saying, you know, what a dick dude, like show, showing off who's at his house. It's like, no. what? so I'm not allowed to sh- because somebody famous came to my house. I, I shouldn't show that. Yeah. Well, people are, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, comment, you know, those, those comments are off the wall. Sometimes it's like, it, what, you're not allowed to be friends with people. Like, come on. Yeah. It's like, Oh, look at him bragging. And it's like, in a way, yeah. Okay. Sure. Maybe I am. But at the same time, am I supposed to hide what I did? You know, yeah. like, I mean, yeah. you can put pictures of your party cause there was a bunch of nobodies there, but if I, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why is that? You know, it, it makes no sense. It's stupid. But, yeah. you know, I think a lot of times people comment because they don't have anything better going on. And they're honestly, a lot of times their lives suck. And it's, it's like, just jealousy. I mean, I hate yeah. I think it sounds arrogant to say it's jealousy. Oh, it but is, though. all it is. the all the hater type comments I get all seem mm-hmm. to come from jealousy. And yeah. honestly, anybody who takes the time to watch any of my content or whatever and put up a shitty comment about, you know, anything, honestly, those people that took the time to think that out and post that, you know, 
they're clearly it's like I, I got you i fucking got you okay because yeah. you know what because whether you like it or not love or hate me i affected you i affected you in a way where you had to take time to fucking do something and yeah. at the end of the day if you're not commenting about me then i'm not relevant so you know that's a beautiful way to look at it and i feel like you've probably achieved that level now where it just kind of rolls off your back it's just like yeah okay. i you know it, and I find as I get older, you know, the, the people try to take digs at me like, oh, you know, fucking, you know, grow up and, you know, get a real haircut and quit dressing like you're a teenager and quit dyeing your hair. And it's like, OK, I, I didn't realize that I couldn't wear a horror T-shirt and a pair of shorts. What's the age limit on that? I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> Where's the cutoff? Where can I get the khakis? I've never bought them before. You know, yeah. I don't know. That's fuck them, man. It's uh, people like that. I mean, they're really inconsequential. It's like I noticed on some videos recently. I obviously I do a lot of mall content as well on, on the mm -hmm. YouTube channel. And uh, I'll get some real like venomous haters on there. I did one of uh, Chris Town Mall here in Phoenix recently. And I got this person who just went off. They're like, it's people like you that are the problem that are killing malls. And I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> they're, like, they're, like, they're like, oh, how dare you, you know, speak ill of this mall. People are trying to make it, you know, happen here. And I'm like, lady, like, it's not me that's killing the malls. It's the massive ring of crime around the mall. And, you know, the fact that this place has been going downhill since 2003. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's I'm, like, am, like, my, I'm not Amazon. Okay. I'm, I'm not the, yeah. I'm not the reason the malls are dying. Yeah. You know? And there's some people who just go off and I'm like, lady, I've been going there since the nineties. Like, it's like, I, I'm, I'm not the problem. You know what I mean? But you're always going to get people like that. And I'm sure, you know, your channel's very big and it's like, I'm sure you get a lot of hate, but for every surprisingly, shoot, I don't get as much as I would expect. That's great. I mean, what I was going to say was like, for, for every one shitty comment you get, there's probably a thousand positive ones to just drown it out. So it doesn't even mean anything, right? Yeah. I mean, I rarely, rarely ever delete a comment. I mean, yeah. it has to be really shitty and yeah. not shitty. I don't care if it's shitty towards me. Mm -hmm. um, if it's shitty towards someone else, that's when I'll definitely delete it. Usually if somebody's shitty towards me, I just throw it right back at them. You know, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't get, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't get into, oh yeah, well, fuck you. I don't get into that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just, you know, if somebody's gonna say talk shit about, um, you know, I, I, if I just let them know it, it doesn't bother me. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, making comments about, you know, some like this, you know, make comments about my girlfriend being like oh is that your daughter you know when they know you know this is their way of being uh -huh, you know because you're old uh, it's like it's like okay if that's your burn yeah and honestly that seems like another one that's stemming from some jealousy Let's yeah. yeah 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 so okay it's like yeah um she's my caretaker okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> i I, yeah. I i think i could be doing worse um exactly. so all right whatever i you know it's it all that stuff's it's it's funny i i it actually makes me laugh i mean i don't i don't it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all really i just I, it's just oh here what do we got now oh here we go you know and sometimes it is fun to have a little banter back and forth because clearly they don't have anything better to do but uh let's see what else do we got here um okay so i know you do a bunch of amazing amazing super in-depth uh, filming location videos. I've watched quite a few of them. Um, one of my favorites, the Bill and Ted's filming location videos, the one you did with Adam and both versions, the updated one that you did as well. And what's really special uh, about those to me is I grew up in that area. It's oh, like okay. went to Metro Center many, many times. That's my first mall memory is like circa oh, 1990, wow. 1998 Metro Center Mall, Christmas time, going in with my dad to get a gift for my mom. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Metro Center is super special. And it's, it's did a you ever do any Metro Center content? I did. Yeah, I did a couple videos. Um, we did one that's called Metro Center Retrospective. And uh, it was me going there uh, about last May, I think, when I thought it was going to get demolished. And they had signs up that said, like, you know, caution, you know, demolition permits and stuff like that. But it's still standing as of right now. But um, you didn't you weren't able to get inside. Not after it closed, but we did a video. I kind of compiled everything that we had 
And we went in circa 2018 when it was still open. And we did a full vlog of that, like before this channel existed. And I was able to post that. And then I compiled all the old footage I could find online, which was like seven minutes, if that. It was like nothing, which is crazy. Cause like, according to my parents who went there when they were teenagers, like that place was it. I mean, like even yeah. pre -Bill even pre Bill and Ted, like that place was it. I mean, that was like one of the biggest, if not the biggest malls in the United States in the seventies and eighties. And um, the fact that there's so little footage of it is just like mind boggling. But I, I, you know, got everything I could and compiled it. And uh, I bookended it with uh, the last Dillard's that was open there. It was like a Dillard's clearance. Me and my buddy went in there and we vlogged it. And that was the last store to close there. So it's a pretty good retrospective. And uh, I did another video that had most of that footage and footage from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure included as well. So I've done like three videos on Metro, but not have not been inside it since it closed. Well, I'm I'm so grateful that I did it. I mean, that was that was right when I started kind of doing stuff on my channel. Like I was, yeah. you know, it was during the pandemic. Uh -huh. um, and uh, a buddy of mine that lived in Arizona messaged me and said, dude, they're closing the Bill and Ted's mall. This is the last day. It yeah. was like two days before, like literally it was like, it, it's a Monday. It's closing on Wednesday. I'm like, yeah. fuck. So Adam still lived here and I just <laughs> hit him up and said, dude, I'm going, you want to go with me? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So we just did, took a road trip and it, I, that was such a fun trip. We had so much yeah. fun. Um, it, it was just a, such a spontaneous adventure. Um, yeah. I should have called it Sean and Adam's excellent adventure, but, um, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm so, I mean, you did the freaking baseball field and you did, you know, uh, what was it? Golf and stuff. And you did, I mean, you, you hit everything. Well, that circle the, K. You know, the golf and stuff thing, we got so lucky because what happened was we had driven all day. We got mm -hmm. to our hotel. We checked in and um, uh, I, I was uh, talking to the girl that was working the front desk of the hotel. It was like, I think it was like 630 p.m., right? Mm hmm. And, uh, and for some reason I told her what, what I was there for, you know, I'm Bill and Ted's and, you know, tomorrow we're going to the, the golf and whatever, the water park thing. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, Oh, you better go today. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, cause as of tomorrow, they, they had just announced an ordinance that they were shutting down all water parks and anything wow. to do with it. Like, it, I'm like, are you serious? So yeah. I called them and they said, yeah, th today's our last day open. And Damn. we had 30 minutes to get there. So we jumped in the car. We jammed there and literally walked in like 10 minutes before it closed. That's and amazing. we just grabbed the footage real quick and got out of there. Um, That's incredible. I, I was bummed because I wanted to actually go on the water slides and all that stuff. So, but I'm sure. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That video was, I mean, 10 out of 10, like top tier. Uh, the only location we did, obviously, aside from Metro, um, was I went to that Circle K, which is now something else. They, yeah. they, it's no longer a Circle K. It turned into some, you know, generic quickie mart. But um, it's so weird how, like, little care there is for, like, the fact that it's a filming location. Like, you go in, there's, like, one little old, you know, torn up poster behind the register. And it's like, that's yeah. it. But it's like, shit, there was, you know, George Carlin was in this freaking parking lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh -huh. Alex were here and, like... That's so crazy to me, but um, fantastic job on that video. Um, how did you become buddies with uh, Alex Winter? Um, I don't remember how we met, to be honest. It's mm -hmm. a good question. I, I, it's been so, I've been working with them for so long. I don't remember how we met, but yeah. I started, I started booking them for conventions. It's over a decade ago. And, um, we've worked together ever since and uh That's as awesome. our relationship you know as we did more together w you know he became more of a friend um yeah. uh because at first he was very kind of guarded um he's kind of a he's he's not the guy you'd expect you or you'd think you know um yeah. he's super intelligent man just a really just smart mm -hmm. guy but yeah i i was so so like 
um, appreciative that he uh, did that Lost Boys thing with me at the bridge. That you was know, so, yeah. We shot that on Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, literally, uh, we shot it on Thanksgiving a couple of years ago, like two years. Man, it might have been. It was, I think it was two years ago last Thanksgiving. It took me wow. that long to get that stupid video up. Damn. That was a good one. I really enjoyed that video. Thanks. And he made it great because he told so many great stories. I mean, it, yeah, it, stuff that he'd never told before. It, it was, it, I was really proud of that one. I had a lot of trouble with that one because Warner Brothers is the worst when it comes to copyright stuff. Okay. Um, and um, I re edited that damn thing 40 times. That's brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Wow. It was cool hearing some of those stories, though, from him firsthand, like him, like, clashing with schumacher and stuff and like stuff yeah. that you know i never even thought about and that that whole bridge sequence was so cool yeah that was awesome so i guess kind of tied into the filming location videos uh which one out of all of those was the most difficult like to actually like compile everything to put it together like which one was the toughest hmm it's a good question um that lost boys one was not easy I had to go back. I had to go back um, to Santa Cruz to reshoot some stuff I wasn't happy with. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the toughest ones might have been, and I haven't watched it in a while. Um, but uh, and it's one of those toughest location to get into was uh, the Danvers State Mental Hospital from Session Nine, oh. and when that came i'd been begging shout factory to do this is one of my all-time favorite movies i'm like you guys have got to do session nine mm -hmm. if you ever do it make sure you call me and one day they said guess what we got and i'm like no way so i i said i want this one i want this you know because normally i would just really do just the horse hollowed grounds and Every once in a while, Michael Felsher would pull me in to go to, you know, he needed me to get an interview for him. Could you? And I said, no, I want this one. Like, I want to yeah. do the interviews. I want to do everything. Nice. So, um, so I ended up doing, you know, going to all interviewing all those people that was, uh, I did all that. Um, me and uh, Buzz Wallach did it with you. Me. You did that for Shout Factory? Huh? You did all that for Shout Factory? Scream Factory, yeah, Shout Scream, oh, yeah. Scream. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, s same company. Um, and uh, so w I was like, man, I really want to do a horizontal grounds for this, but they tore the building down. Smash it had it. been it had been demolished. So, but I had I had broken in there twice when it was still the standing and filmed a bunch of stuff. So I said, you know what, I'm going to kind of reverse engineer this thing and I'm going to take all this footage and I'm going to try to build an episode around it. And cool. that's what I did. And I went back and I went to the, the, the couple locations that were still existing. I went to where the building was. The centerpiece of the building is still there. They, it, they've re, uh, they kept the centerpiece of the Kirkbride building and renovated it and built onto it and into it. It's a condominium complex now. And oh, the okay. graveyard is still there. Um, huh. So I went back and, and did retrace my steps, but used footage from when I got in there years before. And it turned out to be my favorite episode. I, um, maybe favorite episode until Clockwork Orange. That's probably my new favorite episode. Nice. I mean, I can imagine that kind of a bitch to do, like putting everything in and doing it backwards, you know? Yeah, I mean, because I had hours of footage. We were in, we shot a lot of footage. Yeah. And, uh, but I made sure I got all, you know, back then I was trying to find all the spots, you know? Yeah. So, excuse me, I pretty much got everything, you know, but it, it was like a shitty camcorder. So it, it looked like a friggin' Ghost Adventures episode or something, you know? It had that bad special though in a way i mean i would think like it's like it's like this crazy found footage like the place doesn't exist anymore like there's something kind of magical about it you know yeah that's what made the episode extra special when it was all said and done it, yeah. it was like this is really cool and different and people seem to really like it i'm just glad i was able to get in there see it and document it you know that's awesome yeah, I've, I've only dabbled a little bit in like location filming i, I went to albuquerque last year and i did 
Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul locations. And I tried to mm. not be super cliche with that because there's a million of those. So I tried to like focus a little more on like kind of the lesser shown Better Call Saul locations and stuff. But that in itself was like a pain in the ass. I mean, it was fun to make and it was great to see the finished product, but it's so hard. And I look at the scale of the stuff you do and it's like times 50 of what I've done. So it's like, it's interesting. It's interesting to hear that kind of stuff. Do you have any on your list? I mean, I'm sure you have quite a few, but do you have any that like you're thinking about doing this year for, for um, horrors, hallowed grounds? Well, I have a bunch of episodes that are filmed that Ooh. I'm just, I'm just trying to get them edited. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I, uh, and I've been working on them. I keep ju- going back and forth between different episodes. Yeah. Um, Cause I'll get bored and then I'll sneak over and start working on another one. Um, so I've already shot. These ones are done. They just need to be edited. Um, Exorcist one, nice. Exorcist nice. three, Ooh. Uh, hereditary cool. uh, class, uh, class of 1984. Um, three o'clock high, uh, near dark. Wow. You got a bunch. Um, slaughter high. Nice. Okay. Uh, almost finished with phantasm. Still got a, like a couple spots I need to go shoot. Wow. Um, so I've, I've been pecking away. Quite a few, man. That's quite yeah, a few. No, I'm, when I say I got a lot in the can, I do. You know, it's how like, far does go? Like, have you been like, are you sitting on some of those for like a couple of years? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> as like I, I, I'm kind. You know, I'm a perfectionist. Not, not so much in. I, I'm more of a completist than a perfectionist. Where, yeah, like yeah. I, I did, I did near dark. I went to. See, is that's Arizona, and I sh- I shot it when I went for Mad Monster Party in 2022. Cool. I went and I shot it all, and there was one location I couldn't find, and it was Caleb's farm, like <laughs> his. And I found the house that was the interior of his house, which was a completely different location. Couldn't get inside, <laughs> but talked to the 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 owners the former owner's brother and he was there when they shot it. And I, I interviewed him and he told us stories. Yeah. And I was like, damn, man, I really want to find, you know, the house though, where, where, you know, where it all went down. And there was the shed where they did the transfusions and everything. Right. Yeah. I found it. And I went back when I did mad monster party, 2023 went filmed that house as abandoned shed is still there looks just like it did in the film yeah got it all got home and i just i keep getting caught into other episodes i, I want to put ahead of it yeah, so yeah. it's completely shot um i need to get it out because to this day <laughs> nobody's done a near dark episode so i i'll definitely beat them to the punch but to my knowledge nobody knows where that farm is so yeah, awesome we'll, um, we'll keep it that way we'll keep it. yeah that's exciting yeah mad monster party and man. I- same thing happened with uh uh exorcist one and three because i went and shot that when i was at monster mania maryland 2022 uh-huh. then uh i missed one location which was the bar that's called the tombs and that was they did scenes for part one and three in that bar and wow. when I was there in 2022, it still hadn't opened from the pandemic Damn. and it literally opened the next week. So when I came back in 2023, drove back out there, shot that stuff. Now it's done and it's just a matter of finishing the editing. So, well, I'm looking forward to that. That's amazing. What yeah, I was no, they're going to be good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. What I was going to say about Mad Monster Party is that I've got a couple remnants from Mad Monster Party behind me. From actually the first time I met you, I got, uh, you were with James Remar. I see his signature right there. <laughs> yeah, I, got this, I got this Warriors uh, poster here autographed. And that was the first time I crossed paths with you. And then last time I went, I got the Tom Atkins Escape from New York. And that's when you're gracious enough to give us an interview for that uh, vlog that I did there. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, a little, uh, a little reminder of Mad Monster Party is always, always around the unfazed office. Is that Tears for Fears right there? 
Philip yes, one of my favorite bands of all time. That's a uh, Tears for Fears Shout US and UK remix version vinyl. Um, yeah, huge fan of Tears for Fears. One of, one and of what's, my what's the one next to the Warriors? What is that? Uh, that is Brendan Benson, La Palco, um, autographed album. Are you have you ever heard of Brendan Benson? No, you ever listen to the Rackham Tours? No, oh, okay. He's, he's one of the co founders with Jack White of the Rackham Tours, but oh, okay. His, his solo stuff, man, I love it. You should give it a listen. He's like, uh, kind of like power pop, you know, that type of stuff, but such a good, such a good artist, huge fan of his stuff. But uh, you've got, speaking of a collection behind you, holy shit. I mean, like, we can talk a little bit about the collection as well, but mm-hmm. I mean, just looking behind you, like, is that a bunch of vinyl you have on the bottom that I'm seeing? Oh, that's all records, yeah. And nice. there's, there's more over there. That's the uh, bad. I mean, this is just some of them. Yeah. yeah. I've got a pretty wicked vinyl collection myself. I can't show you because they're in boxes, but mm. I've got probably about mm, 400 some odd records. But uh, one I got recently that I think you'll appreciate is uh, the Halloween Kills soundtrack. That was my most oh. recent recent addition to the collection, which I thought was pretty cool. Very nice. Yes, yes. Well, let's see what else we got. Oh, speaking of music, um, if we want to tie in to the show a little bit, something that happened tonight, 30 years ago on this night, it was Nirvana's last live show tonight, really? 30 years ago. Yeah. Wow. And I was looking, there's this great Instagram page that I follow uh, called Alien Kurt. And it's like super, super cleaned up high definition videos of Nirvana. And this hmm. guy goes in, I don't know what program he uses or if it's like enhanced with AI or anything, but he goes in and takes like, you know, pretty basic camcorder footage that they had of a lot of live shows and mm-hmm. cleans them up. And it looks like someone just filmed it in 4K on their phone like last week. I mean, it looks so cool. And he posted some videos of, you know, Kurt performing at the last show when they did like that, uh, that Cars cover of My Best Friend's Girl and stuff. And it was oh. really, it was really cool to see. Like I, I'd recommend Alien Kurt. Shout out to Alien Kurt. Pretty sweet. <laughs> All right. So your collection videos are absolutely fantastic. Like next level, totally just amazing uh what are some props that you still need that are like some holy grails that like are attainable but like you haven't gotten them yet well that's kind of showing my hand isn't it and if uh somebody ha- you know what i mean they'll be like oh that's the one he needs okay we're gonna rape this guy um i mean there's a few things out there that i'm keeping my eye out for i mean uh, i did just i just added something uh this past weekend to the collection um nice uh since uh, i don't know if you saw my rob zombies halloween collection I did. video i did yeah and you got that great director's chair and everything yeah well it's um there was one thing i was missing from all that stuff of tyler's uh i'll show you i'm gonna give you you're gonna get exclusive here hell yeah all right let's do it Very nice. Okay, the one thing that I needed to complete the set oh, was the clean cool. version. Nice. And this is this one one of the screen used clean masks. I believe this is the one that um, Adam Weissman is Steve is wearing. Mm-hmm when he tells Hannah Hall, Judith, to close her eyes, and he goes, you know? Yeah. It's this oh, one. Beautiful. You got the clean mask. Very yeah. nice. So you got his entire collection. He sold you, like, the full, everything that he had, essentially, right? Uh, Tyler did. The only thing Tyler kept, you know, so obviously Tyler didn't. Tyler did not have that mask because he never wore it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was pre-huge Tyler. Um, mm-hmm. That was uh, young Michael. So, um, so that came from, that came directly from Wayne Toth via another collector. Um, another collector (laughs) reached out to me that had bought it from Wayne Toth and said, Hey, look, you have all of them. I think you need this one to have the whole set. And he was gracious enough to say, basically in a way you win. I wanted to get them all. You got it now. You know, you might as well be the guy to complete the set. So it was very cool of them. Um, 
but uh yeah the only thing tyler wanted to keep was his hero knife from part one makes sense. which worked out great because i had one already that was the one thing i did have i had a part one knife so great so um, it's complete you're a completionist it's complete pretty much i mean the only thing i don't have uh is a screen used um young michael clown mask i have a real one because that was just re that was basically wayne toth recasted a pre-existing store-bought cl uh, clown mask i have a real one from the store back in the day but as far as a screen used uh i don't so okay and i can live without that uh but you know you never know maybe it might come up eventually right yeah never now, know as far as OG Halloween, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You have an original 197 is it 1978 Halloween mask, correct or no? You mean a, a Dom Post Kirk? I have a, yeah. I have a Dom Post Studios unconverted Captain Kirk mask. Yeah, nice. nice. But Do as far as no, only one person in existence has uh, a part one or two mask. It's the same mask um, <laughs> that the guy owns. That's kind of rotting falling apart people have seen pictures of it online uh -huh. yeah, i remember people uh, asked me if i would want that one and not in its current condition no yeah sad no yeah yeah and that was the same one that they used because we we got the chance which was amazing to interview uh dick warlock yeah. and he was talking about how it didn't quite fit right even back then like getting yeah. on, you know going into number two um what, what other stuff do you have in terms of um michael myers memorabilia and stuff what else do you have Dude, I, I know, got, but like, what are what are what are a few? You don't have enough time on this pod to go through all that stuff. Give us, I mean, give, us I, the, give us the short highlights. Um, I mean, I have them <laughs> at this point. I have a mask from every film except for one, two, and four. Wow! I mean, as far as like production made or screen used, so, that is incredible. Wow! Yeah. And a few knives too, right? Yeah, um, j just part one and two, Rob Zombies, and I have a half knife from Halloween Kills, the one that gets stabbed into the uh, the black wow. nurses you know, in the back of the SUV. He stabs yep. them in the eye. I have that one. Oh, that is with, cool. With the eye rig or whatever. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah, I'm a huge, huge Halloween fan. Big fan. Uh, let's see what else here. Um, okay, so I know you have background in screenwriting and like you're you're involved with film in different ways. What if someone came to you and was like, "Hey, you can take on one of these big franchises. You know, Sean, you can do you can do a Halloween film, you can do a Friday the Thirteenth film, you can be in charge of a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street reboot. Which would you pick and why? Like, if if you could do one installment of any of these beloved franchises, which would you pick and why? And what route would you take? I don't know, dude. That's, uh, you know, my immediate gut instinct says Halloween just because it's so close to my heart. Yeah. Same. Um, but at the same time, it's been so long since we've seen anything new from the other two franchises that those would be fun to jump on to. But I think I would probably just have to go Halloween. You know, I've written a couple treatments for different Halloween sequels that I would have loved to seen get made. Um, and I've talked about either posting them online or maybe just doing a video talking about what I would have done. Uh -huh. I'm pretty proud of both. I thought they were both, they were, they were both be fairly controversial, 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 uh, yeah takes um but uh but i think ultimately better than what we got you know yeah because yeah. one of them was a sequel to h2o mm -hmm. um it's hard to do much worse than resurrection uh yeah. <laughs> so i i liked where i was going with that and then i, I also personally I, I know it's not not everyone agrees but i i personally love h2o i love halloween h2o i like h2o i like h2o i just um i would uh I wouldn't have done what they did with Resurrection. Um, yeah, Resurrection. I think, I think I it was a missed opportunity. And, and, yeah. and you know, and, and you know, Rick Rosenthal is a friend and a client, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but I, I just it's not a it's not a film I care for. Exactly. And yeah. I would say it's probably the most hated in the franchise, I would think, you know. Um Yeah. I think you're right. <clears throat> but um I also wrote a treatment for um a sequel to uh, Rob's Halloween 2. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, um cuz I, I you know, when when we didn't know what was going to happen with the franchise, I was thinking I didn't it was clear Rob didn't want to come back. Mm-hmm. So th- I know there was there was scripts being kicked around. Um, there was a Halloween 3D one, mm-hmm. uh, and I read it, and I remember being like, "Oh my god, you know, please yeah. don't do that." And I started thinking, "Well, how can we save this? How c- what what can we do?" And 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 I wasn't tr- I never intentionally tried to make it like something. Yeah, I. Uh, never put two and two together until somebody, when I was telling somebody about it and they said, Oh, it's kind of like new nightmare. And I was like, Oh, I guess in a way it is. Cause w- my idea had to do with Rob zombies movies mm-hmm. were actually the film versions of what really happened. So oh. I was going to, bl- I was going to blend both worlds and let the original Halloween films Jamie Lee Curtis ones that was real that happened. And Rob made movies based on actual events. So I was, I was going to blend both worlds. So it would have included people from both. That's, Uh, that's a cool way to connect to the universes and like, or the, whatever you call them, the timelines, right? Yeah. That's that, that was, that was what I was going for. And I had a really cool way to, to merge the two and you know, it, it ends up becoming fan fiction. <laughs> here's, here's a thought. And, you know, it's something I, I also do screenwriting myself. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of scripts I've been sitting on for the last, like, 12 years or so. And been thinking about doing table reads on the channel. I feel like yeah. that would be something that could be really cool for you. Um, you know, maybe you could do it like, you know, even like Chris Nelson or somebody and like get in and like do or or, you know enlist some other actors you know to maybe come in and do some table reads i think that yeah. could really just be great for fans to hear and maybe potentially mm-hmm. even traction to you know have a future for those films yeah i mean it would i i'd have to go back and look at them and see how s- scripted they are how much dialogue there even was if they were just treatments there weren't you know it wasn't a full thought out script yeah um, i know the treatment for the follow-up to Halloween H two O was much, it was much longer than the the Halloween, I guess what would you call Halloween three, yeah. Rob Zombie's Halloween three, um, it, it, that was that didn't I don't know how far I got with that, um, I'd have to look back, but I, at some point I'd love to share those ideas. I there's a couple things in there that I just felt so, I you know. I, when I read the script for Halloween kills, mm-hmm. when I first got sent the script for Halloween kills, cause I was involved in helping cast, you know, I brought in Charles Cyphers and Nancy, uh, Nancy Stevens. Oh, I nice. was involved. So I technically worked on the film. That's um, it. so when they first sent me the script, the original opening of that film, which Chris and I talked on a, a, a podcast a couple episodes ago, mm-hmm. I got goosebumps reading. It was so, oh my God, like this is fuck yes, right? I was like, hell yes. And then they completely changed it, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I was yeah. so bummed. But I kind of got that vibe when some of the ideas I came up with in my i'll just give you the big one because god only knows if i ever get around to telling the story but the premise of my sequel to h2o was jimmy uh from h2 lance guest character Mm -hmm. gets up one morning goes outside grabs a newspaper he's he sits down at the table making himself some breakfast opens up the paper and he sees and a thing about uh a local um head head i don't know what you call her what what her title was in h2o but 
the head of the school, whatever, Carrie Ed Tate, Master or whatever. headmaster, yeah, missing, yeah. missing and, you know, uh, murders and blah, 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 Carrie Tate missing. And there's a photo of her hmm. and he sees it and he about falls off his seat because he recognizes her okay. all these years. He thought Lori Strode was dead because she faked her death. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and took on a new identity as Carrie Tate. Mm -hmm. So the whole story is him going back or going to California from Haddonfield to, to try and find her. Right. That's cool. Um, and uh, when he does find her, this was the moment that I thought was just like a holy shit moment was it mirrors the scene in uh, Halloween when Lori finds Nancy Loomis. No one, uh, Annie, he opens the bedroom door and, and Lori is dead on the bed with the Lori Strode, Strode tombstone because she would have had a Lori Strode tombstone. So yeah. like Michael took that tombstone too, you know, and it was, I mean, imagine that moment, you know, that would have been a way for Lori to die, not yeah. fucking falling off a building after kissing Michael fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. that We, we try to forget that part. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I had little things like that, that I thought could have been so cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and obviously like bracket, uh, he goes to visit bracket and, uh, he goes to the police station when he finds the newspaper and, Brackett's retired and, and officer hunt is now the sheriff and hunt tells him how to find bracket. He goes to Brackett's house. Brackett was in on the, the, the faking of the, the, the fake death, you know, so he fills him in on it. And, you know, I was able to connect all these characters, you know? Yeah. But anyway, table read, man, table read in the future. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm yeah. saying it right. I think people would freaking love it. I think it'd be amazing something to consider definitely uh well before we wrap up uh, a couple things i want to talk about i like to ask kind of like uh kind of the same questions to certain guests on different interviews uh, mm -hmm. i want to ask you what your first concert was and what the most recent concert was that you went to first concert right there that's a flyer for it nice it's kiss uh anaheim convention center november 6th 1979 dynasty tour oh that's badass who, yeah who so i have to? i have the ticket stub that's not my original ticket stub mind you here i'm, I'm there it is right there it's okay. a reproduction ticket stub like it's it's an original ticket that somebody scanned and made a like a a replica because i was nine years old i didn't keep my ticket stub exactly but that's a that is an ad for the concert so Cool. Who was the opener with with Kiss? It says Breathless, but I don't remember them at all. I don't know <laughs> if we ever saw them. I don't know if we got there just before Kiss went on. I know I was there for the whole show because I remember how they came on stage and how it because it was like the stage it went dark and then these different colored lights shined like a green, a purple, a blue, and a red. And they rose from the like they they rose on the stage like from the stage and That's they bad. just like posing like with their arms up you know they rose up and I was just like I was cool. blown the fuck away because man I was nine years old I didn't know you could see Kiss in, in person I had no idea I mean I would I didn't when my dad said guess what I got a surprise I'm like what we're going to see Kiss and I'm like what do you mean we're going to see Kiss we're going to yeah. go see them in concert. I'm like, what? I didn't really understand, you know, until yeah. I got there, you know, uh, like the huh? hands down to this day, the coolest thing my dad ever did. I mean, That's, that is cool. Yeah. That's amazing, man. So I, I think it's safe to assume you probably have a kiss pinball machine, right? I have both of them, the old one and the new one. Yeah. No, badass. I love pinball. <clears throat> um, Okay, and then most recent concert that you went to in person? Uh, I went to a concert um, <clears throat> a week ago. A week ago today, I saw Lizzie Borden at the Whiskey A Go Go. <laughs> oh, that's badass! Lizzie Borden. If you don't know who they are, they're an '80s uh, horror metal band. They were one. They were the first. I mean, yes, you know, 
obviously Alice Cooper and whatnot were, were doing at first, but sure. he, he, Alice Cooper's his idol, but he was the first I could remember ever a band that actually wrote songs about movies. Like okay. they, um, they had songs that were specifically about films and he was a big, like they did a big theatrical horror show. Right. And, um, what is that? What is that thumbs up bubble that just popped up? That was oh, weird. Sure. Was there a thumbs up bubble? Yeah, just a thumbs up bubble bubble just popped up on your screen. That was I bizarre. Didn't, I didn't even notice it. My my it screen's was, it was almost like you were thinking it, like a thought bubble and huh. a thumb in it. That's weird. I've seen it a few times where recently if I do thumbs up or thumbs down, it'll do that. Like if you let's really? see if it does. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Fireworks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom is going crazy, man. That or I'm having a seizure. I don't know. Um, so anyway, uh, it, like uh, it's almost like, for example, what Ice Nine Kills does now. How they yeah, have yeah. songs about horror films, and they, you know, like if you go back to Lizzie Borden's second album, it was called "Love You to Pieces." They had a song, or actually, maybe go to the third album. But no, second album had a song called "Red Rum," which was all about The Shining. Yeah. His third album had a song called Ultra Violence, which was about Clockwork Orange. You know, he he had songs about specific films. And awesome. uh, anyway, they're surprisingly, they're still together. Um, cool. and, and the I went and saw them. A fun venue, like the whiskey, so badass. It's yeah, it's a small little club. I mean, I played there. You know, I, I back in the day, uh, opened for Cold Chamber on New Year's Eve. Cool. Um, but. Uh, Anyway, they um, they played on a great show, and it was uh, the only original members of the singer and the drummer. They're brothers, mm -hmm. so they had a newer bass player and guitar player that I hadn't seen before. But I think they've been in the band a you know decent amount of time. But it was the thing I thought was the funniest was I went up and I after the show and I bought a t shirt and I'm leaving, and as I'm walking out the bass player was standing out front and he goes, Hey, Sean, I just want to say, I love the podcast, man. Thing with two heads is awesome. And I'm just like, you gotta be shitting me, man. I, I thought that was so cool. I'm like the bass player in the band I came to see is a fan of my show. That's rad. You know, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah that's a huge cool. compliment. Yeah, for sure. I have a whiskey, a go-go story. <laughs> um, I went there shoot like seven years ago mm -hmm. and, I saw Wild Child, the Doors tribute band, play there. Okay, yeah, yeah, they play there regularly, yeah. And it was so cool, big Doors fan, so I went and saw them. Show was going great, and about halfway through the show, Robbie Krieger gets on stage with them and jams with them for like an hour and 20 minutes. And wow. closest thing you could get to see in the Doors, and he was so good. Wild Child was amazing, and it was just like this like magical experience just for a Doors fan. It was so, so cool. I had an experience like that once where um, this was 1995. Okay. I went to the Kiss convention in Burbank, California. It was when Kiss, it's funny, the, the weird coincidence, I'm literally going to that venue tomorrow for an okay. event. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I went there for the Kiss convention and Kiss put it on. And part of the event, they did an acoustic set. Oh, wow. Now, Peter Chris quit the band literally two weeks after that concert. Like he left Kiss. That was yeah. that was wasn't an, an, uh, was an Eric Carr after mm, that. And Eric Carr joined after. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that day, Eric or Peter Chris showed up at the Kiss convention. Wow. Had not been on stage with them since 1979. And got up and did a couple songs with him. And th that moment was so magical, man. Having been being there, just like, oh, my God, everybody was flipping out, you know. That is, that is unreal. And it was that moment that sparked the reunion that happened the next year. So, that is cool. You, you were at the, like, ignition point. Like, that's, yeah, yeah. Wow. And so I'm assuming if they did acoustic, it was no makeup or anything. They just went Yeah, just no, did. no makeup. They they were they wow. hadn't done the makeup since 83, which was Creatures of the Night. Yeah. Which I went to that as well uh, when I was 12. So So cool. I had a cool mom. <laughs> My mom that took me cool. to that one. Motley Crue opened their first tour ever. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. a line. 
dude, that's fantastic. I'm old. The, the cool thing about being old is you see better concerts. That is very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been very fortunate in that respect. Growing up, my mom and dad took me to some great shows. So I uh, I respect it. I respect it. Uh, okay, we've got a couple more questions for you. Um, Keep going. Let's do in it. The same, in the same vein as the concerts, uh, first movie you remember seeing on the big screen as a kid and the last movie you saw in a theater? Most recently. <sighs> the first movie I remember was, I mean, oddly enough, is probably The Exorcist. And I was four years old. Awesome. And because because the imagery, I didn't know what I was watching. I didn't understand it, but the imagery yeah. was burned in my brain. It was at a drive-in theater in Anchorage, Alaska. Really? Uh, yeah. Did you, um, so did you you grew up in Anchorage when you were little? When you were little? I I moved to California when I was six. I okay. was born in Anchorage. Interesting. Okay. Um, last movie I saw in the theater was. I think the the Bob Marley uh, one love, I th- I think it was that or Godzilla minus one. Those I saw. Sorry, go ahead. I was I saw them both pretty close together. I don't remember which one I saw last. Okay. I was just gonna say Godzilla minus one was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Was really good. The Bob yeah. Marley one was okay. It was it wasn't bad, but it, it needed subtitles. I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying there. I mean, the the Jamaican accents were so thick. It, subtitles would have helped, really. Three, three little birds, man. Three little birds. Yeah, man. You know, I'm going down to bed, man. <laughs> I'm just like, what? What did you say? Hey, what? Was <laughs> that relevant? Did I need to know that? I don't know. That's um, funny. Yeah, no, really, no interest in seeing that one. I, I do like some of the music biopics, but. Uh, I think some of them have been kind of done to death, so I'm kind of like, eh, I'm a little, I'm a little reluctant on some of them. But um, yeah. I, I really dug Godzilla. I thought Godzilla they did a really good job, especially considering you know the budget they had to work with compared to like the Godzilla versus Kong movies and everything. You know? Yeah, it was, it was. I'm not a huge Godzilla fan. I'm a fan of the character. I'm not uh, really a fan so much of those films. I don't yeah. think they're all that great. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, that one, I was, you know, a lot of people had said, dude, it's actually a really good movie. I'm like, okay, I'll go check it out. Yeah, I was surprised. But I mean, that whole approach they took, like setting in World War II and everything and the Japanese perspective, I mean, it was super, super unique, which was good. And I've yeah. always been a much bigger King Kong fan personally. Like, I'm always like, eh, Godzilla, who cares? He's stupid, you know, dumb mm-hmm. lizard. Like, show me the monkey, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. But I'm glad you enjoyed it too. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on, but, um, what, uh, what else do you have cooking as far as like, what do you got going on for the rest of March? Well, I'm getting ready to go to planet comic-con in Kansas city. Uh, got a, a bunch of clients at that show next weekend. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a busy weekend. I'm gearing up for that. Um, that's also Melissa Barrera's first convention. Uh, she's the, the lead in the last two scream movies. Oh yeah, um, so that's exciting. Just to, it's always exciting to to get someone brand new out there and introduce them to the, you know, I've I've been very fortunate with that, um, having been the guy that was able to convince or get someone to do it for the first time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and I gotta tell you, she is so cool. I mean, you never know what you're gonna get with actors or actresses. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, and she's just so chill. She's been really a pleasure to, to work with just on getting all, all everything prepped. Mm-hmm. She's been awesome. So I'm looking forward to meeting her. That's the um, best. I wish her luck. Yeah. Yeah. I, the response has been strong. I think she's going to do really well. I think she's going to do really well. That's fantastic. Um, and then uh, other than that, you know, the next video, I, I, I'm still – you know, I'm plugging away on different Horrors Hog Grounds episodes. Uh, I'm almost finished with the Slaughter High episode. Um, but I have a friend in England who has really been trying to see if there's any way we can get inside the interior of the school, which is an abandoned school. It's a, it's still there. It's standing. We shot it from the outside. But he finally got in touch with somebody that's involved with the place and we're working on it. So I'm kind of like holding like, well, maybe I should wait and I'll go back and I'll shoot that before I release it. You know? Yeah. Um, 
I'm not too worried about anybody scooping me on slaughter high. <laughs> yeah, I think, you, I think you've got the market cornered on that one, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a real deep cut. And to top it off, most people, their initial reaction when I bring it up is like, wait, that was shot in the UK? It's like, yeah, it's a, oh. it, it, even though it's supposed to be an American high school, it was it was a, it was shot all in England. So yeah, you got Slaughter High, you got Willy Wonka, you got Clockwork. Yeah. I awesome. didn't do Willy. I didn't do Willy Wonka. I've oh, never no. done. I was just talking about movies that were filmed in England. Oh yeah, well, well, Willy Wonka is Germany. Really? Yeah. Oh, I learned something new. I thought it was UK. Nah, Germany. Wow. Yeah, I've oh, I've never visited those sites. It's a it that's a bucket list one. I'll get to those eventually. Um, it's, a, it's a Charlie bucket list. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, hey wow. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a fucking great dad joke right there. <laughs> Thank you um, very much. Thank you. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's the one I want to get to. Um, so we'll see on that. Uh, I know we've got a few more collection videos shot that Brian is editing. I don't know what he. I think he's. Trying to think of what the next one is. We did one that is all my Elm Street and Friday Thirteenth props, Ooh, be nice. uh, which is gonna feature that right there quite a bit. Which is a newer yeah. acquisition. Very um, nice. Now, which one is that from? Can you can you give us a little hint, or we gotta wait? Well, uh, both. Well, the, the glove was made for part four. Okay. Ultimate, ultimately unused, but then did get used in part six, Freddy's oh, Dead. Very and cool. the sleeve is screen used from Freddy's Dead. Um, oh. It was on a special effects arm, a different arm, uh, in the scene where he cuts his fingers off when he kind of recreates that scene from the original. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, that sleeve was on that arm. So oh. it's a screen used sleeve and glove. So oh, you ever you ever just walk around the house sometimes and you're like I'm just going to just put this on. You ever, do you ever just like put on certain things and walk around your house? Um I I have. I mean I put on I did put on I put that glove on. I did put it on, you know. Um nice. I This actually is in good enough condition that I can put this on. It's 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 Hell not yeah. it's not sketchy to do. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's good. I think we got the thumbnail right there. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'll, just do, I'll just do the rest of the episode like that. That's um, gorgeous. And uh, uh, let's see. And I think that's in such good condition because it really barely got worn. That's Where the ones, the ones Tyler wore yeah, are okay. not as in good condition. Okay. Um, awesome. Let's see. What else? Uh, I'm going to mess my do up. I mean, um. What else? So, oh, we did. A, I did another. I uh, Paragon sent me one of their uh, super deluxe Phantasm spheres. Oh, cool! So I did a product unboxing of that, and while doing that, I decided to compare it to all the replicas I owned, plus the ones that came in the DVD sets. Plus my screen used sphere, so I did a whole sphere episode. That's pretty cool. Did you did you find that the uh, the one that you got most recently was the heaviest? Was it the heaviest? Or you'll just have to watch the episode to find out. <laughs> well, that is exciting, man. Well, I'll make sure to put um, all your links down below too, so everyone can can keep up on all the awesome stuff you got going on. And then well, there's another episode, I think. Where's that? I'm just blown away backlog like how much stuff you keep like in the arsenal dude like, well i also i shot another poster video i just haven't edited it and people have been up my ass like dude you start you stopped at like letter i or h or something and you didn't finish i keep that's the thing is like the whole youtube thing has especially in the filming location crap mm -hmm. has become so competitive that I sometimes will stop and go, I need to get this one out because I'm afraid somebody's going to beat me to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Makes sense. And, yeah. and there was a couple like that, that I was like, I need to get those out. Like Clockwork Orange was one of them. I wanted yeah. to get that out. Like nobody had really done a definitive Clockwork Orange episode. There's mm -hmm. been 
decent ones, but they always miss a bunch of spots. So yeah. I was like, this is going to be everything. I'm going to, you know, definitive, you know? Yeah. And that was the thing that I think made me the happiest and the proudest was reading the comments. Everybody was like, dude, finally somebody did it, like did everything. And this is the most complete episode I've ever seen. And what I love about your videos is you go into every detail. You don't miss anything. See, I'm the kind of guy that'll sit on an episode for a couple years because I want it to be complete. You know what yeah. I mean? Where a lot of these location guys that are in it just for the clicks yeah. will be like, Pulp Fiction filming locations and you watch it. It's literally two places. And you're like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. This is your whole episode yeah, is two locations. Yeah. Yeah. Those suck. You know, like my fast times, of Ridgemont high episode, dude, I went crazy trying to get every spot. The stuff yeah. I went through to get in that house is nuts. Yeah. One of these days I I've, I've threatened going back and putting these episodes back up um with audio commentary Ooh. the only the only reason i've been kind of worried about it is is i have so many copyright issues like uh -huh. putting the i don't know if you know this but the episode i put up for bill and ted's when i added the extra stuff to it uh -huh. it got copyright flat i can't monetize it it's yeah. blocked in all european territories yeah it's a bit yeah my I, first good. version is fine that's it's so weird. I had the same issue um, with the first one of the first Metro videos that I did because I, you know, I, I put the thumbnail as Bill and Ted Mall mm -hmm. and uh, it was all the footage I had of Metro Center. And then at the end, it was, you know, them, you know, running, running through and um, the, the whole sequence at the end, you know, with Kangaskhan going crazy in the sporting goods store and everything. And um, yeah, demonetized. But I left it in because I was like, well, people deserve to see it. But it was still irritating because it's like, you know fully demonetized and it's just like dude come on like but i've thought about doing commentaries where i tell the stories of like shit that happened and what i went through and should, there's some yeah. funny stories i think some people would enjoy it but you should yeah one day yeah i think that and i think table read i think the audience deserves <laughs> that's why i'm just gonna keep pushing hey, you on ta table, read. table reads real low on my priority list <laughs> yeah. i have but, a list over here i'm looking i have it taped up here uh -huh. of about 20 horse hog grounds episodes i want to do that nice. i haven't started yet um That's so crazy. i've got a lot you know people ask me all the time why don't you do this movie and if it's something that i don't connect to i just you know I, yeah. it's got to be something that i i love i don't i, I won't do that. it people can I don't do it for that. the clicks man i don't do it for the, i do it for myself for fun you know and I think that's what makes your stuff so good. That's what, what's, what makes it resonate with people, you know? It's like when you do it for clicks and you fall into that trap, it's like people can tell. Like people yeah. can tell. Yeah. So I think the, we, you know, the thing's been driving me crazy lately, and this is get off my lawn. I'm not that? pointing out anybody in speci specific. Yeah. But a lot of videos lately where they just drag them out because they want them to be longer to make more money. And yeah. a lot of them to me is like these long slow panning shots that are yeah. slow and it's like okay come on enough already just yeah it's like get to the info man quit screwing around you know exactly like, yeah sometimes there's a lot of filler i noticed that too dude big time filler. and if i do filler i straight up call myself out in the video like i'll joke about it like you know yeah. I'll even say like, I'm really trying to stretch this location out. Ain't I? Cause I, there's, cause it, it'll usually be like a movie that has like three locations. I'll be like, eh, what else can I say about this place? You know, let's push this to 20 minutes. No, I really yeah. love the way you, I really love the way you do stuff. I think you got a great approach. I love the diversity of your channel too. I mean, like all the different type of content that you make, you know, the podcast is fantastic. The collection's fantastic. You know, the filming locations are fantastic. Um, I'm also a big fan of your buddy Scott on tape. I think Scott on tape is doing really, really great stuff as well. I, I watch him all the time, just as much as you as well. Yeah, no, Scott, you know, Scott's another dude that is legitimately passionate about what he does. I mean, he <laughs> is, yeah. I don't think he does anything. I mean, obviously he does it for the clicks in the sense that that's how he makes a living. Sure. 
but he really works hard and the content he's doing is stuff that he really cares about. I I never hear him doing something like, Oh, I got to go do something on this because it's hot right now or, you know, or whatever. Yeah. 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 He, and he's a guy who he'll sit on stuff for a long time. In fact, he's told me about episodes that he shot that he never released just because he wasn't really happy with it and wants to go back and redo it. You know, and I'm like, wow, yeah. you know, like, that. like full on episodes he shot like of stuff that, you know, there, there's I'm not going to say what it is. I don't want to, you know, because I, I don't know if he wants the info out there, but there's a specific movie I love that I've always wanted to do an episode on and he's done it. And wow. he was just like, yeah, I didn't like it. I want to go back and redo it. I'm like, fuck, well, when you do, I'll go with you. Let's do it. You know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys yeah. definitely should keep doing the collabs because those are fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, we enjoy doing collabs just because we play off each other really well. And, yeah. um, and, and it's fun to hang. Like I, I really enjoy hanging with him. I really enjoy hanging with Adam too. I mean, when me and Adam yeah. hang. Yeah. Adam was awesome. We have fun. I mean, the one thing I do miss, <clears throat> the one thing I do miss about having an actual camera guy yeah. when, but when this guy, Buzz Wallach used to do them with me uh-huh. was I was always trying to make him laugh, you know? So yeah. I was being funnier. And now when I'm by myself, I don't have that. I'm not trying to make anybody. I'm just doing my thing. Yeah. And, and I think when I had the camera guy, I had it, it a lot, a lot, there was a lot more personality behind it. You know what I mean? There was more, <clears throat> more humor. Yeah. But, I think sometimes you kind of overthink it too, though. Cause I mean, you definitely have a great sense of humor that translates in your videos a lot of times. Um, and I think sometimes it's easy to get in your mm-hmm. head thinking like, Oh, I don't have, you know, your regular guy doing that type of stuff. And I, but you're, you're still being funny, but sometimes it's just your, you're performing for the camera. So it's a different vibe, you know? Yeah. I mean, like the, the video we just did for the planet Hollywood thing. Great video. by I, the I, Huh? Great video, by the way. I oh, really enjoyed thank it. you. Like yeah. I was watching that and I was laughing at some of the stuff I said, but cause I was trying to make Brian laugh, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, Oh, this is the stuff that's missing from when I do it by myself. But uh-huh. You know, whatever, uh, you know, I, I still try to be funny and, um, you know, like, but the, like the clockwork orange one, all, all the ones I shot in the UK, my mm-hmm. friend, rich was there. He wasn't the one filming me. He shot a couple things that I, Hey, I want to do this recreation. Can you try to get this? And I'm going to do this. And, you know, but for the most part, it, you know, I was just shooting myself, but uh, there there was some funny stuff in there because he was watching me and I was being silly. But that's awesome. Um, but for the most part, yeah, like I kind of just stick to, um, yeah, just trying to get it done. So no, that's good. You're doing great, man. And any more plans to uh, work with Netflix, like on like the movies that made us type stuff? No, but oddly enough, I bumped into. Brian, uh, I can't remember his name, his last name, but he's the creator. He's the main guy for that mm-hmm. series. And he also did the toys that made us and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I bumped into him at that planet Hollywood thing. Um, he was hanging, he was there hanging out with uh, Chris Hardwick actually. Oh, interesting. And, um, and uh, it was good to see him. Yeah. And he was like, it was funny. I came up to, as I introduced myself to Chris, cause I'd never met him before. And Brian goes, Sean, it's, he goes, Brian, movies that made us. I'm like, oh, shit. How you doing, man? And then he starts telling Chris, he goes, oh, Sean was a huge help on, you know, a few episodes. And I was just like, oh, cool. Anyway. Um, awesome. Yeah. No, no, nothing. No, I mean, I would be glad to if if they reached out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they were super cool to work with. And that's a hook. Oh, you want to talk about content? That's another video I've been sitting on is yeah. the day. Nick Castle shot his bit going back to the Myers house uh, in the movies that made us Halloween episode. I shot a whole behind the scenes thing of him doing it. And cause I was there with him that day and 
I've been meaning to put that up too. So I've, I'm sitting on tons of stuff. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Well, I'm yeah. super, super looking forward to it. Um, I think that that covers all my notes that I got here, man. But anytime uh, you want to do another podcast in the future, you are 100% more than welcome. Open door, unfazed policy. Feel free to join me. Thank and you. Uh, if you ever want to collab on a video in the future, if I ever make my way out to LA or you ever come out to Phoenix, man, I would love to collab on something filming locations or whatever you got cooking yeah um phoenix i'm trying to think if there's anything out there uh near dark's done so <laughs> yeah, like, are you near cool. dark fan uh honestly dude i've never seen it to be totally honest uh, good i didn't want you trying to scoop me on it no no um, i wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> do you know but the movie still, uh no to be honest i don't it's really? one of those, like i i need to i'm a horror fan but i'm not like a deep, deep, deep cut horror fan. It's like, it's a more great movie. Like, it yeah. came out the exact same time as lost boys and it's a vampire oh, wow. movie. Okay. And it unfortunately didn't get the praise lost boys did, but Catherine Bigelow directed it. Um, oh, do you really? know who she is? Yeah. Of One of her first films uh, stars, Lance Henriksen, Bill Paxton, uh, Bill Jeanette Paxton. Gold, Jeanette Goldstein, Jenny Wright, and um, Adrian Pazdar and Tim wow. Thomerson. Great cast. Uh, written by uh, um, um, Eric Red, you know, who did The Hitcher. Um, oh, yeah, uh, so it, it's it's a great film, man. Underrated gem. You should check it out. It's a good vampire movie. Different, well, different what, take I'll, on the vampire. I'll tell you what, I'll watch it just so I can fully appreciate your episode on the filming locations. There you go. And you'll watch it and go, I know where that farm is. Yeah, like <laughs> it's right next door, man. Where'd I drive by that all the time. What's he talking about? <laughs> That's my that's my my old favorite stomping ground. But, that's actually one of the episodes I plan on getting out. Like it it's it's one of those ones that I've been really trying to buckle down and get it finished because I do want to get that one out because a lot of people have been bugging me about it because I've been talking about it for a couple of years now. So that's awesome. Well, I will one hundred percent watch it so I can totally totally appreciate the episode. Um, Sean Clark, thank you for being on the episode, man. This means a lot. And uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime soon. Absolutely. All right, man. So uh, everybody, make sure you make it a good week and remain unfazed. Thanks for watching. And cut. Cool. All right, I got to pee real bad. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. I'll hit you up on Instagram. But thanks for doing it, buddy. I appreciate you. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks for asking. All right. Take care, man. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye.